Hello everybody and welcome again to one of my live feeds today. Now I've just been live but for some reason people couldn't comment so I've decided to go live once again just to make sure that if you want to put a comment on there you can do. Now what I'm working on as you can see is the otter. This is part three. Now I've done some of this obviously offline as you know but um, I'm just going to work on the mouth today. I'm just going to work around that area. Again when I was live on the previous live event this is about five minutes ago I've already added all this detail into there so the first kind of initial foundation wash layers and gradually built those up as I've gone along just by adding those in. So stay tuned and let me just show you how I'm going to complete this live on camera hopefully. I'll try and get it all done for you whilst I'm here just to get the mouth area done at least. Okay because obviously there'll be fine tuning and kind of twiddling and fiddling as we go along as well. Right here we go. So say hello let me know where you're from. So it needs to be brought down a little bit more bit of a wiggly line for this for this bottom lip area well it's the gums really isn't it just down the side there and the mixture I'm using for this is a little bit of Elysian Crimson Scarlet Lake and Phalo Blue as I said earlier on it can also be Intense Blue which is another way of saying it because that's the Cotsman um, student range ones as well because I do have those as well actually People think I use all the expensive paints, not always. I do use good quality paints, but it's not always the most expensive. Not because I'm a cheapskate, it's just that that's what you get used to using, isn't it, you know? All the way through. So using that to kind of dampen this down. I know, got some bright red lips, this uh, little otter, hasn't it? I want to see where that goes to there. So where we got the teeth, I've still got to paint the teeth in properly yet. The got the first kind of layer of washes on there. There's a bit of a highlight as well within this lip. So I'm going to see if we can sort of replicate that by painting the shape first of all. Now this only is softening down on this edge as well. And just the very top there. So we need a different colour I think for that as well. So we get a little bit more of the alizarin crimson. Right, uh, a little bit more around the top there, I think. We don't want to make them too bright, I know, because we don't want to look, it's got bright red lipstick on. <laughs> Just been to the beauty parlour, this little otter. <laughs> okay, so Lizard and Crimson, keeping it more to a watery consistency. down the side there bring that down it's actually dark on the inside okay and soften that down again now I've just noticed once again for some reason or other YouTube's chat facility is not working so I do apologize well nothing I can do obviously but but I can see that doesn't work. But please put a comment down below uh, after the video has gone aired, been aired, or you know, I don't know if you can while I'm talking live anyway. But once it's gone on to YouTube permanently, because it will do after this video as well. If you go back onto it, just put a comment down below for me if you don't mind. That'd be very kind of you. So if you have any questions you want to ask within the comment section um, after we've gone live, then please go ahead and do so. Or there's an or, I know some things that you roll with as well, isn't it? Or if you go on to Facebook as well, I'm just going to find that for you a minute. When you go on Facebook, um, these are my social media links. So if I just show you on there, look, oh, I'm trying to get the Facebook one in line for you. Is that there? Yeah, there you go. So the second one up, facebook.com forward slash the Devon Artist Paul. I'll leave it on the screen just briefly for you, just while I'm just playing with this and I'll take it off again in a minute because if you go onto Facebook and go to that page you find me on there but most of all if you're interested in have a look at my main channel dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum, you can find me at the top of the screen on Patreon but also whoops moving the wrong one there devonartist.co.uk is my main one as well okay so bear that in mind right just get rid of that one for you oh not that one I got I'm trying to stretch across the room here, so bear with me a minute. There you go, that's better, isn't it? Hey, got there in the end. I knew it would. 
bit difficult while you're stretching across the room and you've got a paintbrush in your hand. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to now go darker on this area here. And again, we can pull paint off. If it's not quite the right shape, we can just start to fine tune it and just pull a little bit of paint off in places to kind of get more highlights, you know. So we can do it that way around. It's a good thing about painting is that we can move things, we can change it. You know, people seem to think that watercolour is, is not forgiving, it's an unforgiving medium, but it's not. You know, you can, sometimes if you're using a staining colour, like alizarin crimson sometimes, it's difficult to lift. But there are ways and means around, around a lot of kind of happy accidents, as Bob Ross used to call them, you know. So it's well worth uh, kind of just practising and getting a little bit of knowledge and ideas. Another thing I do as well is this video as well, because of that. Right, so a little bit more. I'll lift a touch more off there, I think. Gradually building up, as you can see. Now I'm going to go into the burnt umber and a tiny little bit of lamp black in there as well and start to define some of these shapes that I can see. Now that tends to go more of an uphill slope then as it comes over towards the edge of this tooth, it comes down again. Just in the very tip of the brush here, two airs and air, that's all it is. And then up on the side. And do the same again. Now this isn't the darkest colour yet. I mean, bearing in mind, we are going to go quite dark on this. In places, in places. Now you also got this patch as well underneath the lip. I do want to fine tune that lip a bit more yet which is more or less black, but you can't have black on its own because it can look a little bit on the flat side. So I tend to kind of add a color to black. So if you do use black paint for your watercolors, not everybody does I know, then add a little bit of it though, because it can look, as I say, a little bit on the flat side. And, uh, and the color you add depends to me, the way I do it depends on the subject itself. So for example, with this one, I would obviously add a brown to it or even a red. To it but you could obviously if it's a, a pale bird or if you're using let's say you're painting a white dog and you need those dark hints in places then you would add a little bit of blue for example in there and sometimes a little bit of brown you'd vary it a little bit more so it's, it all depends on the subject it's a matter of kind of testing out again like i do here a lot just testing with some scrap pieces of watercolor paper before you make a start on the project just so you've got some general idea on what you're doing and how you're going to go about it Okay, so now underneath the chin again. It's all about gradually building up the details you go along, bit by bit. I still don't like that lip on the right hand side though. I'm gonna soften this down, you know. So for that, I'm gonna get some tissue paper and very lightly in tiny, tiny circles, keep rubbing, keep rubbing, keep rubbing, keep rubbing, keep rubbing, and then lift. Alizarin Crimson and the Scarlet Lake. I'm going to add this in just around the teeth there. Look. Just behind the teeth. That's it. And then I'm going to get a little bit of that phalo blue because it's getting darker, it's getting duller in there. It's further away as it goes into the into the jaw, into the mouth. A bit more red over the top, a bit too much blue. Just to darken it. Add that colour in. That's better. Now when we darken this again, this area will stand forward a little bit more. So that's where you've got to kind of plan things ahead. So it's all about planning the painting as you go along. A little bit more blue in there, not much. Tiny amount just to dullen it down. I want to make sure I get these curves right as well, where they come around from the tooth. I'm trying to get also the shape of this gum area. Now I can fine tune this area down here now, finally. It's just about dry there now. Just a small area there. And a little bit of brown. Okay, just pick out that tooth again, <laughs> not literally. 
and start to build up more of the detail now because the next layer I'm going to put on there is a dark will be the darkest layer for the jawline I think as you know this um, this area down here just on the jaw I just want to add a little bit more of the raw sienna or oh, burnt no, let's go for burnt sienna actually in this one so we've got a bit of burnt sienna there look, on the brush and I'm going to get some fresh alizarin crimson within that burnt sienna because that's rich in it just so we've got a deeper sort of red there and I'm going to add this in just around there take some off on the tissue first just a small amount and we can vary that as well we can add a little bit of kind of scarlet lake into that at the same time so it's going to show you that one there look. it's a little bit of scarlet lake in there now you can barely tell the difference take some off off the brush first and add that in just to change the color a little bit probably use some of that within the jaw actually just to there and I want this to start softly, kind of gradually get lighter as it comes around. And to do that, all I need to do, get the brush to wash out, come back in with a clean, damp brush. And then soften down that edge that little bit. See what I mean? Just kind of knocks it back a touch. And we'll carry on down here as well. And then down underneath the jaw. Quite dark under there as well, isn't it? Really dark. I'm going to do this in the direction that the fur grows or goes, but grows, to make sure that we've got it in the right place. So this is coming down. I have to soften it in places. A little more around there. Doesn't help when you've got an itchy nose as well. You know that, don't you? Because <laughs> I have. And then <laughs> this dark area here. I'm not going to just fill it in. I'm going to do this in, again, the direction that the fur grows. And making sure that some of that brown colour shows through. It's also quite dark as well along the line underneath the gum. So barely touching the paper, two hairs in air again. And down to where it just comes around the side there. Okay, we'll carry on with that one, that part in a minute. Then down underneath and to the left. Right. Now then, let's fill this in down the side. I think that's nearly it, apart from a few tweaks here and there for kind of the jaw area. Now, a little tip as well if you take most of the paint off the brush, you can use a dry brush or semi dry brush, just add those extra little kind of details in here and there if you want to. Crest. Now, the gold crest is a beautiful little bird, the smallest bird in the UK. But I'm going to go through all the wet and wet washes, the fine details over the top, painting realistic feet, adding watercolour white, and also painting wood. Now, bearing in mind, you also get a full PDF tutorial on how to paint this bird as well within that same month. So, you must join on that same month. The second one we're going to be working on for the second week of January is going to be working on the gold finch. Now the goldfinch is a beautiful bird with that red face, but the European version of the goldfinch. Again, working with layers into a realistic form. Then we're going to be working on a cute little blue tit. Now the blue tit is so, so tiny, it's a lovely little bird. But I'm going to show you how to paint this step by step, right from the basic wet and wet wash layers, all the way through to the fine details over the top, creating a feeling of form and obviously a realistic feel. Then we're going to add the branch and all the fine details to the branch at the same time, working with all the details along the way. 
after that one then we're going to work on a beautiful little wren i'm going to show you how to paint that very tiny little detailed eye as well and a strong looking beak we'll start with the wet in wet washes all the detail over the top and we're going to add layers upon layers of detail to create that form and the realistic feel to this tiny little wren once we've added the white we're going to work with wet in wet washes and scumbling techniques to add the branch then finally, the fifth bird will be the robin. Such a beautiful bird we know with that classic red chest as well. So once again, we're going to work on the eye, a strong looking beak, adding the fine details over the top, even down to the lifting off techniques as well. Painting those delicate little feet. We'll also be using watercolor white and then thinking about that very solid and detailed looking wood. So if you fancy having a go at painting five realistic looking birds, come and join me on Patreon between January and February 2020 and we'll make a start on painting these beautiful little birds. Hopefully I'll see you there. Bye for now. Right, hello, I'm back again. Yeah, it's me again. Hello. Right, let's see if we can get a little bit closer on this for you. Is that a bit better? There you go. Lot. How's that today? Yay! Okay. Now then, you can see all the details now. I thought I'd just kind of leave it till now, only because I forgot, basically, and uh, on how things look. Right, here we are. Now, I want to get a little bit darker, just within the teeth. Not too much darker within the teeth, because it's quite dark in there now, isn't it? I just want to darken some of the areas. But to do that, I need a little bit of that brownie colour again. If you're asking, if you're asking, if you're applying masking fluid or something like that as well it's really good for that it's well worth uh, kind of keeping all of those old brushes don't throw them away oh sacrilege no don't don't throw them away now i'm going to gradually fill this in now still with the brown and i'm going to go over the top again with that kind of blacky brown afterwards just want to go with the brown first and gradually do this bit by bit don't want to go too dark too quick as I mentioned, if you go too dark too quick, you find it harder to kind of lift off any paint if you need to at some point. So it's definitely worth just taking your time with this. Just down to where, probably about there, where you can just see the back of that uh, tongue there as well. A little bit more. Now I've not re-wetted this area either, so you can see all the brush strokes are in there, but they'll all disappear when we add the next layer of the top. One thing I wanted to do today, but I know I've already been live once before, trying to try and sort this chat out, I know, is that um, by going live, it's, I thought, well, it'd be nice to kind of sort, of sort of finish this otter off, really, nearly finish it, probably do a little bit of tweaking off camera for it, but I mean, majority of it will be done by the end of uh, this live session. And it's been a nice project to work on. One thing I will be doing for Patreon as well, it's working on um, water. So I want to paint something like the type of water we've got here and how I do that. So we'll be doing something very similar to this as a project on Patreon. So if you're interested, you know where I am, you know where the Patreon link is. I've just played all the video to you for the latest project, so you know what it's all about. So bringing this blacky brown down, I'm just going to block it in. I'm just doing it in little strokes. I tend to do that because it does add that little bit more kind of interest to the back of mouth rather than just having a very flat area. I'm thinking where this tongue goes again. I keep nearly hitting that then. It just goes into there. In fact, I can still see it, barely see it on the video. Video? On the photograph. I've been talking far too long. On the photograph, just behind this tongue as well. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I just need to darken just little areas here and there. That's how fine you can get. If you want to get fine, fine, you can get even finer than this, actually. So I'm going to in this dark colour, this blacky brown. Bring a few odd ones down as well here and there. Um, a few more around there, actually, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we're having problems again today, aren't we? We're going live. And last time, last week, we had problems with the microphone battery running out, but that was my fault then. This isn't my fault today. Nothing I can do about it, about not having the uh, the chat. Um, 
Yeah, I'd want to stop this dark line about there. So it's all about looking closely at that reference photo. As I always say, my eyes are flicking back and forth to the reference photo every few seconds, literally. Every few seconds, about three or four seconds, and back there again. Sometimes every couple of seconds. And the photograph is just here, to the side, on that tablet I showed you earlier on. Or on the first video, anyway. So you see what I tend to use. I tend to paint from a tablet. You can print off the photos, obviously, so you could do it that way around. But the thing with printing them off as well, you can never quite get the colours the same as they would be on a tablet screen or an iPad screen. So that's why I tend to work from an iPad or tablet or computer screen or something like that. Because the colours are going to be better, much better than rather the print. Because obviously printers tend to print colours a little bit different in place as well. I know obviously an iPad can show the colours differently to say um, a mobile phone and also to a computer screen they all vary slightly in color so which is the true color which is the right color hey who knows <laughs> so i know the professional photographers do tend to color balance their um their computers to make sure that their colors are the true reds the true blues the true yellows and so on so that's how photographers do that we're very good at what they do but I don't know, because obviously it also depends on the light as well. So when you take a photograph, the colours can change dramatically between a bright sunlit day and a very overcast day when you take the same photo. So if you try taking a photograph, if you've got a pet dog or cat or something like that, which I'm sure you've taken lots of photos, I know you have, you can't tell me you haven't. Come on, be honest with me. It's like you're taking lots of photos and you know yourself that the photos will vary, especially if you've got something like a black dog or a white dog or vice versa. You know, you, you find that the colours do uh, vary be it indoors, outdoors, overcast, sunny day. Which is always one of the issues I used to have when we we're doing commission work um, because um, you're never sure if the colours are as they actually are in real, you know, kind of in person. So it's good to kind of see the dog or the cat or whatever and paint, paint him prior to painting it as well. Right, okay. So that is about that for the jaw and the mouth. Just about. So a few little tweaks here and there. That's all I need to do in places. And um, a little bit of a line in the tooth there. I'm going to go for a little bit of watercolour white. And all that simply is. I'll show you off show you on the camera there. There you go dried up on there but i can reactivate the white paint i use now if you need to know the white please post a comment down below if you're watching this on catch up if you're watching this live i know you can't at that moment i don't think you can can you not until after it's gone live but i do get notifications from youtube when they work but i do get notifications from youtube when people post a comment okay and i do check on a regular basis as well so i will reply to you if you do put a comment down below and don't forget as i mentioned click on subscribe and the bell icon especially after you click on subscribe because at least that way you know that you will be notified when i do go live again now the teeth i want to put a few little white highlights in here you can use white gouache this is a watercolor based white so well watercolor white this is one by saa society for all artists and it's one that i tend to use on a regular basis but there are some good ones out there in fact i have recorded a video on patreon on different whites i've tested five different whites out on that one video on how they perform and the ones um, well the kind of results the kind of ones i tend to recommend more than anything they can judge for yourself which ones you want to use then okay a little bit more there and a tiny bit this is just going to add that extra little highlight there as well i don't want it too thick but if you have it too thin and use watercolor white you tend to find could dry quite uh, quite dull quite gray okay and also where this highlight area is on the lip tiny tiny marks barely touching the paper look at the shapes and coming down and around okay just making sure everybody's okay so half an hour so i'm going to go in a bit all right, so I know you can't chat, but I'm going to go in a bit once I've got this done. 
Um, I've still got to put the whiskers on. I know that. I've still got a few highlights on the body to do with the white as well, but I don't need to use too much white with this particular one, with this particular painting. Some paintings I do use quite a lot of white and I tend to go through, with my videos, I tend to go through how to use the white as well, but obviously that's all on Patreon as usual, as I'm sure you're aware. Okay, a few more around there. So there's a little bit of white paint there. A few on the old chin. Got a bit of a hairy chin going on here. I know the feeling sometimes. I do, I do, I do. So I want this more to a creamy consistency because if it doesn't go that creamy, you tend to find that um, it just kind of goes pale when it dries. And also I may tint this white as well that little bit afterwards once it's dry as well. Also, I mentioned about the ripples down here, didn't I? So there's a ripple about there. Then it hooks up, then it goes down. And it goes bright about there as well. Yep, that's about right there. And just to soften that, I'll soften that down in a minute. And there's also another ripple here. It's a little bit thicker the line, then goes thinner, goes across. Barely touching the paper, just taper it out that little bit there. And there's another ripple. They get ripples everywhere, don't we? It goes about there and comes around. Just about to there. Looking at the shape. Again, I'm looking at that reference photograph. So often now my eyes are barely on the painting, actually, <laughs> at some point. Just to get that there. And another ripple. Oh, another one. About there. Just pop them in. Okay. Wash the brush out. I'm gonna come back in and just soften down this inner edge of this white paint. Just by using very tiny circle motions, that's all I wanna do. All I wanna do is something, no, okay. And just highlight it a little bit more in places. There you go, that's better. A little bit more on this side. There you go. Taking my time with this because I want to get these right. Now this one's not too bad as it stands really, but I might just highlight just underneath here by just going over the same place time and time again. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. It's like a breathalyzer again, isn't it? As I said before, I've never used one, so I don't know. And then lift that paint off. Okay, let's do that again. Not much came off on that one. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> there we go. And lift. That's better. And basically, it's a bit mucky, this one. There you go. That's what we've got there. Mucky, that's a northern word, isn't it? That's what I've <laughs> You can tell I'm a northerner, can't you? Bit mucky, this one. And soften down again. Another one there. Might just leave that old one there actually. And again, there's a lack of it's like a reflective light just underneath this highlight. Just there. Tissue, quick, before it dries, and lift. That's all I need. Just a little bit of reflective light. And they're all over the place down there. When you really look carefully at that reference photo, you see what I mean as well. And soften. Now then, I've got to pop a few little whiskers in there before I go. And I'm going to complete this offline because I've got to put little water droplets on and uh, obviously that'll take another couple of hours work to do that. But I'm just going to show you what I do with this a little bit and we'll see what we can do. Thank you, Joe. My partner Joe's giving me a lovely cup of coffee. She's good, you know, isn't she? She's lovely. Lovely. Right. Now then, barely any paint on the brush. When you're doing whiskers, practice this on some scrap paper first with watercolour white, but make sure you've got some colour on the paper so you can practice beforehand. And don't have your brush too overloaded when you do this because then you end up with very thick, extremely thick whiskers. Okay, so, and if it doesn't go on enough, I'd rather it not go on enough than go on too much. So go over the same line again and lift at the end. Again, and lift. 
So we've got a nice tapered edge when you lift that brush off. Look at the directions they all go in as well, because I can see some more up here actually as well, just kind of hooking over to the top of the lip a little bit. Barely touching, there you go, look, just there. I do one half and I'm gonna go with that. And a few more. And if they're not bright enough, you can very lightly go over the top of these again, as I mentioned. I'd rather go with it more than once than put too much on in one go. And again, make sure that the white is to a creamy consistency. There, that's better, you see. Go over the second time, make sure you're being quite accurate. Sometimes it's also worth turning the paper around as well, because for me being a left-handed, I tend to find trying to get a curve this way around is not as easy as curving it this way around, because that's a natural kind of action of your hand, isn't it? So for you being right-handed, if you're right-handed, you'll be fine on this side of the paper, but you'll struggle on that side, but I'll find it easier on that side. So you might want to turn the paper around when you put these on. But before you do, just put a few, just a few odd ones here and there as references so you know the direction they're going to go in. You don't want to go in the completely wrong direction. And if you're using a tablet or an iPad, you can just pinch the photo and turn it around, move it onto the side so it's a different orientation within the iPad as well. So you can do all that with it, can't you? Just to make life a little bit easier for yourself. And there we go. Okay, so I'm going to carry on with this offline now and work on the other side of the whites. I've got to put some highlights or some little kind of dark whiskers coming off the top of the head you can see in the reference photo as well within this. Okay, so it's giving some general idea on how I paint an otter. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Now remember, as I mentioned, click on subscribe down below as a thank you for me and as well, click on that bell icon because at least that way you'll be informed when obviously I'm live again. So please do that for me if you don't mind. And if you fancy popping along to Patreon and fancy having a free tutorial, I know, a free one, what I suggest you do, go to my main website, which is devonartist.co.uk. I'll put it in the description down below for you. So devonartist.co.uk. And you find that when you go on there as well, all the links uh, to all the videos within the tutorial section of the site. So go to tutorials, go to Patreon, and you'll, be, you'll find the links there for the free ones. You can have a go at painting a free robin or even painting um, a bee eater bird as well, which I've got on there for a freebie. And that includes a reference photograph and obviously the outline drawing at the same time for you to have a play with. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this and I'm going to say goodbye for now, but thank you very much for watching and I'll see you when I can go live again next time around. It might be in a few weeks' time, uh, but until then, take good care of yourself and please post a comment down below. So, bye-bye for now.